Jace Rail, who is one of our players that will be taking the court um, later this month after yeah. we play Arkansas. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be on the show, and I'm just glad to have this opportunity to be interviewed for the first time. For sure. Well, tell us your story a little bit. You're from Indiana. Um, you're not from another country. Yeah. Um, so tell us your story and where you're so from. I grew up in Kokomo, Indiana, um, town about 60,000 people. I grew up in a basketball family. My grandpa actually still has the record of points at IU in a game, 56. He had the first three for the Indiana Pacers. And then my dad played for IPFW. And now I'm playing for Purdue. And then I went to high school at Kokomo High School and had a pretty good career there. We went to state last year and we didn't win, but I would say it was pretty a pretty successful season. For sure. And uh, you guys had a very good team at Kokomo. So you guys play once. So what kind of led you to coming to Purdue? There's so many good schools in Indiana for the basketball state for one, but for two, you know, your major is engineering. engineering. Um, so there's so many good engineering schools out there. Um, what kind of made you pick Purdue? Was it close to home? Well, I think it's mainly because of my mom. My mom was been a Purdue fan. She, my mom, my grandma on her side and my grandpa went to Purdue. And I think she kind of convinced my dad to become a Purdue fan. So I grew up going to Purdue football games, Purdue basketball games, really from about the age of 12 up until now I've watched about every single basketball game on TV and you know, coming here the first when I first got here is like being starstruck, really, because I've been watching these dudes my whole life. And it's through any sport, except for maybe the Chicago Cubs, Purdue basketball has been my favorite team to watch ever. And so, now you're on the team. And now um, I'm part of the and team. And you yeah. got also, so you probably remember the days when we were probably both in middle school at the time. We had on um, Haas, who was on the team, um, Carson, Edwards. Carson Edwards, lots yeah. of great people who are, or some of them are still in the NBA or playing in the European League. So, yeah, yeah boiler up. Um, so what would you say your position as a guard? You're about 5'11", 6 foot. 5'11", yep. What's your favorite angle to shoot from on the court? I think, uh, I guess maybe, I don't know, hopefully no rivals watch this, but do you have like a favorite? Probably the corners. I don't know if it's just because it's shorter or not, maybe because there's no backboard to use. I don't know what it is, but shooting those threes in the corners, I can sh I can shoot a lot better in the corners than I can from the top of the key. And do you like free throws? Oh, yeah. I've always – my dad my dad is and grandpa have always been harped on free throws. My dad used to make me shoot 100 a day every summer, and now I'd say if I shoot 100, I'd go make 95 to 98. Out of 100. So we can put you in against IU in the fourth quarter with two seconds left, and we need two free throws to win. We can put you in an assembly hall in that I've position. Ne I've never been in that position, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so take me through, what would you say, you know, did you feel growing up, back to your story real quick, you know, um, growing up, of course, came from a basketball family. Do you recall the first time you shot a basketball? No, but I do have pictures of – me shooting a basketball on a uh, one of those little uh, tight little tights hoops. I used to shoot on that all the time, and then I started playing at the YMCA, and then back when I played on those hoops, I thought I was going pro. Yeah, so, <laughs> so did I. You might still. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember those good old days. And then the YMCA, you know, you were in a the league there. Yep. Um, little dribblers. Those were those were fun times. Uh, <laughs> So what kind of got you to staying with the sport, though, throughout high school? Um, of course, Kokomo got a very good guy, Flory um, Bidunga, Bidunga, and then a couple other athletes as well. You guys went all the way to state last yeah. year. Um, what was that experience like going to state, playing in Gainbridge Field, Gainbridge Fieldhouse, or for some people, Banker's Life? Well, so – Going into that season, we knew it was our goal. The year before, we lost in the semi-state by one point, I think. So as soon as that game ended, we knew next year we were going to be in the position to make it to state, and we were going to do whatever we could to make it there. And, I mean, we just really – we really worked hard and got there. And then, I mean, I still remember the feeling of running out onto the court. It was – it felt like you were a superstar, like – 
the the bright lights, the twenty thousand people that were there watching. It's just it it felt amazing. And there's two really incredible singers that day. No Duncan, who I've interviewed. Oh, I didn't Great know you were yeah. yeah. And then Clayton Anderson, who um, also uh, did some songs and used to play basketball himself. But yeah, so that experience had to be really incredible. Um, I was not at that game, but I was at the Kokomo Brownsburg game. And I just got to say, if anybody wants to see a good high school basketball game, go about 60 minutes to Kokomo. Um, great gymnasium environment there. Yep, and I think they got a good chance to run it back again this year. Maybe, maybe go to state again. Maybe win it this time. For sure. <laughs> they got my the... buddies at Ben Davis, Zane, who's been on. They're all in college now, so yeah. They they got the Mister Basketball. I'll say that he's probably already won it. But... Oh yeah. So what are you most looking forward to at Purdue? Um, now that you're here in practices. Um, literally in a month, I mean, well, we played a game against Arkansas, but, you know, the real season starts kicking off in about 40 days-ish. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to? Um, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of traveling. Um, I'm looking forward to the traveling a little bit. You know, I, I really want to go see the United States. Like over the summer, we got to see Europe. And obviously that was how really was cool. that? Oh, it was amazing. Going to places like Austria, Germany. We went to Como, Italy. Como, Italy was probably the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. But, I mean, it was just a great time. And the best part was we played four games in 12 days, so most of the time was just exploring. And I really got close with the team there. I felt like I really found my guys and got – because before that, we were doing workouts together, but we weren't really hanging out much afterward because, I mean, I just got there. I wasn't really in the group yet. But now I feel like we're kind of more of a team now with that trip. Which will help in the season. Yes. Um, and of course you get to go to some exciting places. Um, and not everybody might not, might, oh my gosh, <laughs> everybody might not know where we're going this year as a team, but the team is going to Maui, if I'm correct. Well, they got switched to Honolulu. Honolulu. But still, get to go Hawaii. see Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and we play crazy. some very tough teams in that, if I recall. Oh, yeah. um, what are some of the teams in there? I believe Kansas is in there. Gonzaga. And it depends on if we win or lose the yeah. first game for how I'm, many I'm those. I'm pretty sure Kansas and Gonzaga, there's definitely some other good teams in there, but those are probably the two most. And it's during Thanksgiving. During Thanksgiving, So yep. if you are sad about the Chicago Bears or the Lions losing on Thanksgiving, which the Lions probably won't lose this year on Thanksgiving, there's a good chance Purdue basketball will be on. So yes. it's, it's always fun to see that tournament there in that Thanksgiving week. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, lots of great games at Mackey. Um, we have – of course, we have a lot of new teams joining the Big Ten after this year, such as USC, UCLA. Um, what team from the Pac-12 joining the Big Ten are you most look? Are you are you looking most forward to playing? Probably, if Bronny James stays one more year, you see it. <laughs> I USC. I forget. Yeah. But probably UCLA, if not, because I've always been, I've always loved the history with UCLA. So LeBron's going to be at your basketball game. How I, does that make you feel? That would be crazy. <laughs> He's probably the greatest player of all time. And just, I mean, just to see him in person, I'd be, I'd be in shock. I've walked past him before, right past in front of me at a Ohio State game. And I was three feet away. I couldn't get a photo, but wow. the guy is huge. The guy looks like he could be a lineman. I mean, he, he was oh, a wide he, receiver. He he's an his, athlete all He could have played he's any, huge. Sport, like, any sport he wanted to. I know he's huge from the TV, but you look at LeBron in person, it's like, oh my gosh, this guy is humongous. Like, like he could be the best bodyguard in the world too. Like man's, oh, yeah. man's insane. But so, yeah, would you say is there, speaking of, since we're on the topic of LeBron James and players, um, do you have a player that's inspired you? Uh, it could be a current player or maybe a former NBA player. Um, Probably one of, I didn't get to watch him much in my time because he was kind of out of his prime by the time I started getting into basketball. But one of the favorite players to look over clips and try to, base my game off is Steve Nash. Wow. Steve Nash, he could pass the ball with the best of them, and he may have been one of the most efficient players of all time. You know, 50, 40, 90 club. You know that is? Yep. Yeah, so are you a Suns sure. fan then? Yeah, I – What little NBA bit, team do you, you know, for? That's the next question. So that's hard. I used to be a Rockets fan because I used to love James Harden just because of his ability to score. I felt like – Nobody, he just came up with different ways Fear to score. Fear the beer. Yeah. But now that he left, I really, I think I just have to say the Pacers. I'm not really, I'm more of a fan of college basketball, but. Which, speaking of the Pacers, and this is another great chance, 
We play against Arizona, uh, I believe December 13th or somewhere around. They're at um, Gainbridge Field House. So oh, Gainbridge, so Mathern might be there. Yeah, so um, lots of fun games to look forward to. If oh, you yeah. had to pick one game you're looking most forward to, um, what would it be? So, I mean, and you don't just got to say to IU, right? I mean, so many good games, like you said, in the Maui, which is in Honolulu, which is going to be in Honolulu now. There's a lot of good teams there. We play a game, uh, the conference at Gamebridge. Which one are you looking most forward There's to? There's probably two games. Probably if we played Kansas in Honolulu, I think that'd be probably because it's probably two of the best two teams in NCAA basketball. I believe we're number one, but you know, Kansas might be the number two. And then, not trying to sound cliche, but I would I, I can't wait to go inside Assembly Hall and see how see how the how hostile the crowd is, you know? For sure. And then um, there's a lot of other great arenas out there, too. Yeah. Um, I thought you always thought Chrysler Arena in Michigan's. Oh, yeah. Those... It kind of underrated, actually. But, um, yeah. What would you say if you did not pick Purdue, where would have you thought of going? You know? If I didn't pick Purdue. Hmm. It's always a conversation that we're both freshmen, so it's always a conversation that gets brought up when you meet new people on campus. What was your backup school, you know? Mm-hmm. So for you, what would have it been? Uh, probably Butler or Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago. Because I want to say somewhere somewhat close to home, but I also wanted to get out a little bit, you know? Well, we're glad that you picked Purdue, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then to kind of close, what would your advice be to somebody who maybe – I guess they're not really – they're not the tallest. Um, they want to get to play basketball. And they're not trying to play in college, but they're just a kid on campus. Maybe they're a musician. And they're and they're kind of scared to pick up and dribble a ball and maybe play in the side. Like, what advice would you have for them? Probably most important thing to be in a decent at basketball without having the height is you got to – you have to learn the mechanics of shooting. you got to be able to hit open shots open shots when you have them you got to be able to dribble the ball so just just will honestly for most of the stuff with basketball you can like look up 10 minutes of dribbling drills and just do those every day and you could become a great I had one one dribbling drill there's two balls but it took me six whole minutes and you didn't stop dribbling for six minutes and I did it every day for about six months and it made me 10 times better than ball handling Interesting. So it doesn't take too much time, but you just have to put in the work. For sure. And what's, I got to sneak another question in. What's been your favorite memory so far at Purdue? I mean, it doesn't have to be sports wise. It could be anything. It could be a class you enjoy or really anything. Mm-hmm. It can be a sport memory too. Anything. Probably. Honestly, it was probably going to Europe just because honestly, I've never been outside the country before and just going somewhere so far away with people that you enjoy i mean it was just it was a great trip trying new food trying seeing new places it was amazing for sure and the, and and i do got to just ask real quick um what are the what is it is it hard being on a different time schedule like that with traveling and i think that's a big question because you guys are going to hawaii you'll be going to usc ucla in the near future is it tough like that being an athlete traveling? So I feel like it will definitely be tough during the season. See what happened when we went there. We left at I think our flight left at like five p.m. and it's a seven eight hour flight. So by the time we got there, plus the time change, it was eight a.m. the next day. So it kind of just you kind of just slept on the way there and you're fine. But then it was going back home what really messed me up. Going back home. Next week, I was my whole sleep schedule was messed up, and I didn't feel great. But when I was there, I was was, yeah, I was not worried about sleep. I was not tired or nothing. For sure. Well, I appreciate coming on Jacob Beer Show. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Boiler up. Let's let be ready for a big season this year. We're gonna we're gonna do our best, and we have one thing in mind: it was winning that national championship. Right there. We're working hard for it. For sure. And we look at the Virginia story a couple of years ago. Um, they had a first round exit and the next year they won it all. So that is something that I think keep the faith and keep the gratitude and a lot of good things can happen. Well, I appreciate you coming on the Jake the Viewer show. Best I appreciate of luck. you having me. And we'll me. see you around at Mackey Arena. All right.
Number 32, look for me. Right on.